This is part 15 in our series of lectures on infinite sets. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss the axiom of choice and Zorn's lemma. The axiom of choice is a fundamental assumption of mathematics, and the following is the statement of the axiom of choice. It says that if you give yourself any family of sets, so we have our indexing set delta, and corresponding to each element of delta, we have another set. Um, and it says that there exists a function, capital F, from the indexing set into the union of all of the A alphas, with the property that if alpha is an element of delta, then F of alpha is an element of A sub alpha. The function F in the statement of the axiom of choice is called a choice function. And essentially what it's saying is that if you have this family of sets, A sub alpha, then you can create a new set by choosing one element from each of the A sub alphas. So this function f is just simply a device for expressing the fact that you're picking or choosing one element from each of the A sub alphas. Now this isn't something that one can prove to be the case. Um, it's an axiom of mathematics, so it's one of our assumptions that it is something that we're allowed to do when we do mathematics. But it isn't necessary to make the assumption that we can do this uh, when the indexing set delta is a finite set. It turns out when delta is a finite set, one can prove that it's possible to do this by means of induction. Um, but when we have an infinite family of sets, it's impossible to deduce from the usual axioms of mathematics that we can do this, and so we make it an axiom of mathematics. In fact, we've already made use of this axiom of choice when we wrote the proof um, that the denumerable union of denumerable sets is denumerable. If you go back and see the proof of that, you'll see that we had a, a denumerable indexing set, and we actually chose one element from each of those sets. And so in order to be sure that it's possible to do that, you have to make use of the axiom of choice. Now there are a number of places in, in more advanced math classes where you'll see uh, this axiom get used. For example, when you do your advanced linear algebra class, um, you're going to see a theorem which says that any infinite dimensional vector space has a basis. Um, if you were to actually see a proof of that fact, you would have to make use of the axiom of choice in order to do it. In an abstract algebra class where you consider um, an object which is known as a ring, um, and relative to that ring, you're going to want to assert the existence of something called a maximal ideal. In order to be sure that maximal ideals exist, you'll have to make use of the axiom of choice. But we're going to see a nice application of the axiom of choice in the very next lecture where we consider this thing called the comparability theorem. Uh, so this is something that I've already told you about. It says that if A and B are any two sets, then either the cardinality of A is smaller than or equal to the cardinality of B, or vice versa. In other words, this less than or equal to sign, uh, when applied to sets, is a linear order. So in order to prove this theorem, one has to make use of the axiom of choice. And so I'm going to show you how to do that in the next lecture video. But it's not the exact statement of the axiom of choice that we're going to use in our proof. We're going to use something which turns out to be equivalent to the axiom of choice. And that result is known as Zorn's lemma. So let me tell you what Zorn's lemma says. Um, and in fact, Zorn's lemma is something which can be deduced from the axiom of choice, and conversely, if you assume that Zorn's lemma is true, you can deduce the axiom of choice from it. So it's, it's also, it can also be assumed to be a fundamental assumption of mathematics. It says that if script X is any set on which is defined a partial order R, then suppose we know that for any linear, linearly ordered subset y of x, in other words, given any y 
uh, subset of x with the property that any pair of elements are comparable relative to this partial order r. Well, suppose we know that there exists an upper bound um, for that set y. In other words, suppose we know that there exists an element of x which is bigger than or equal to every element of that y, where bigger than or equal to is measured relative to this partial order r. So if we know that we can do that, then Zorn's lemma asserts that x has a maximal element. And by maximal element, I mean an element x with the property that there's nothing uh, in capital X that's bigger than or equal to that element X. Okay, so this turns out to be the version of the axiom of choice that we're going to be able to use in order to prove the comparability theorem. And it's also the case that the proof that I'm going to show you is a fairly typical use of Zorn's lemma. It's, it's exactly the way Zorn's lemma is used to prove, for example, that every uh, vector space has a basis and that every uh, ring has a maximal ideal.